Hey everybody, welcome back to Next Play Records. I'm Andy and I've got a new video for you today to uh, jump on the thread started by Vinyl Richie. If you saw his last few um, videos, he did his favorite, his top 10 albums from 1965, 66, and his latest one was 1967. I haven't looked at uh, 65 and 66 yet, but in 1967 video that just came out, I think yesterday, um, he was talking about how he's not gonna wait to move on to 1968 because not too many people jumped on the, the thread and showed their favorite albums in their collection from 1965 or 66. So I wanted to make sure I show him that uh, we're watching and that the vinyl community is not dead, which he mentioned in his video. Uh, so I've got 10 records from 1967 in my collection. And uh, I'm gonna start with the first two, or the first three that um, are your standards that you would expect from 1967, a couple of them were even on Vinyl Richie's. I'm going to start with 1967, The Doors' uh, debut album, and this was a um, this was a big title in the rock genre, uh, bringing in some bluesy psychedelic rock um, from The Doors, and I believe that this will be on everybody's 1967. I have a early reissue of it on the Electra label, but uh, obviously The Doors with Backdoor Man redoing that blues song. Um, the End, which is the last song on this album, is one of my favorites. That's just a great written song and um, very uh, moody, dramatic song. I like those kind of songs. Um, on, on side one, Break On Through, which one of their biggest hits ever. Um, Alabama song, good song, Light My Fire, another one of their biggest. So great debut album, 1967 from The Doors. We'll start off my top 10 here uh, from my collection. Now I know there's other ones that I don't have that probably are better uh, albums, especially this one. My best representative for Bob Dylan, and I think 1967, uh, John Wesley Harding was his release. But this came out in 1967, Bob Dylan's Greatest Hits, Volume 1. And um, and it covered some of the top songs from all of his first albums up to his 1967 release of John Wesley Harding. So, uh, Rainy Day Woman, uh, Blowing in the Wind, uh, The Times They Are Changing, It Ain't Me Babe, Subterranean Homesick Blues, Mr. Tambourine Band, uh, Man, Like a Rolling Stone, I Want You, Positively Fourth Street, and Just Like a Woman. So, great little greatest hits, released in 1967. This is one of the best ones released that year uh, in my collection. Uh, the last standard I want to show is going to be on everybody's. Could be the best release of 1967, really. And that is uh, the Beatles' Magical Mystery Tour. Psychedelic cover there, great artwork, and some of their best songs on here. Hello, Goodbye, Strawberry Fields Forever, Penny Lane, Baby You're a Rich Man, All You Need Is Love. I mean, that's every song on side two right there. Um, and then side one has a fool on the hill that's a sleeper song it's always one of my favorite when i first started listening to beatles when i was you know a young teenager um you know a tween whatever you want to call it the 11 and 12 year old age uh fool on the hill i always loved that one and uh, on here also is your mother should know and i am a walrus so um probably one of the best titles released in 1967 the beatles magical mystery tour Okay, that's the first three. I've got seven more. And in Vinyl Richie's, I uh, took a little bit of offense. And in Vinyl Richie's video, he mentioned a Aretha Franklin album. Awesome Aretha Franklin that released in 1967. And he said that when they first pushed this album out, they wanted it to go into that jazz genre. Um, the female singers, jazz, uh, was big at the time and maybe on the decline, but... Vinyl Richie said, and in 1967, jazz was a dying genre at the time. And I'm about to show you seven to finish out my top 10 1967 jazz releases. And uh, I'm going to start with an awesome Verve release. I, I got this for the cover, but it is a really good album by Jimmy Smith, Respect. Check that cover out. We got the karate. I believe he was a brown belt or a black belt in karate. And there he is, he's, on the, he's got the brown belt, so I'm assuming that's where he was at the time. So, Jimmy Smith, Respect, he obviously covers Respect on there. Uh, mercy, 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 which you'll see here in a minute. 
uh, Get Out of My Life, T-Bone Steak. That's some of the songs on here. Nice little gatefold from Verb. Nice write-up. 1967 release, jazz release of Jimmy Smith Respect. Uh, the next one I have is a live session from Cannonball Adderley uh, Quintet, Mercy, 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 live at the club. I think the club is in San Francisco. Um, you have this on the Capital Rainbow label, and Cannonball Adderley plays with um, his quintet here, and uh, his brother's in it. Some other, some other great jazz artists are in this, but uh, live at the club, Cannibal Adderley, he plays Mercy, Mercy, Mercy. Sticks is an awesome song written by Cannonball, and also Sack of Woe, which is also written by Cannonball. But another great jazz release, a live session from 1967. The Capital label. And then I'm going to finish off with some Blue Note Heat from 1967. First one. Bobby Hutcherson's Happenings was released in 1967. And if anybody knows, this is one that we're really rooting for uh, to come out on the Tone Poet, you know, at least maybe later 2022, maybe 2023. Just a great release. Um, Bobby Hutcherson on the vibes, Herbie Hancock, Bob Cranshaw, Joe Chambers. Cool cover. Awesome, awesome release from 1967. Uh, the next one I have from that year is a... Warhorse for the Blue Note label, uh, showing that jazz and Blue Note was not dying at the time. The Real McCoy, McCoy Tyner, 1967 with Joe Henderson, Ron Carter, and Elvin Jones. This is one of his best releases in his career here in 1967 uh, on that Blue Note label. McCoy Tyner, The Real McCoy. All right, next one I have, three more to go for my 10 for my collection. Uh, this is a killer Tone Poet release. I had a early reissue that was a little bit scratchy, and so I was happy to replace it with the Tone Poet. Gave the other release to my mom. But uh, Lou Donaldson, Mr. Shingling, Ode to Billy Joe cover on here is sweet. Shadow of Your Smile, The Humpback, one of my favorite songs, Peepin' and the Kid. Uh, great song, song list there. Uh, Mr. Shingling has a good, 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 good... Um, Line up here, Blue Mitchell on the trumpet, Lou Donaldson on the sax, alto sax, Jimmy Ponder on the guitar, Lonnie Smith passed away last uh, this past week, uh, Lonnie Smith on the organ, and Leo Morris on the drums. Lonnie Smith, talking about him, um, wrote the first song on side two, Peepin, for this album, and that's just great to have. This is This is a one of my favorite Tone Poet releases, even though it's not a gatefold, because, you know, there's there's those times where you have that funky soul jazz uh, kick that you want to hear, and there's not one better than this. Mr. Shingling from 1967. Two more to go. Uh, one of the killer releases from Art Blakey, one of the most fiery, let me take it out of the, one of the most fiery releases he had, in my opinion, and it could be because of the lineup, but this is... Um, Look at that reflection. Sorry about that. You've got uh, Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers, The Witch Doctor, Lee Morgan on trumpet, Wayne Shorter on tenor sax, Bobby Timmons on the piano, Johnny Merritt on the bass, Art Blakey on the drums. Just a great release from 1967. There's Blakey. There's the rest of your lineup. I know everybody was excited when this Tone Poet came out, so... Um, more killer jazz from that year. And I'm going to end it with one of the best blue notes in my collection that happens to be from that year. And it is Lee Morgan, Cornbread, Jackie McLean, Hank Mobley, Herbie Hancock, Larry Ridley, Billy Higgins. Awesome release. I think everybody that has listened to this knows how good it is. Blue Note was still kicking out great content in 1967. Keeping jazz going, hard bop jazz. There's your session. Love that picture and the intensity on Lee Morgan there. So um, that is my 10 from my collection from 1967. And obviously just to um, keep the thread going and get back at Vinyl Richie a little bit, I had to make up most of it jazz due to that comment he said when he was talking about um, Aretha Franklin and the jazz genre dying. 
he could have meant something else from it, and that's fine. I'm sure he did, but um, there's my top 10. Everybody jump on this thread. I know that the vinyl community is not dying, and I know that things like this are still needed in it, uh, although I love all the... Um, I love all the stuff that goes along with um, what we see on YouTube from everybody who's collecting records and the community that it brings together. So keep it up. And until next time, keep spinning that next play.